Oh, hey guys, hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I haven't said that in forever. I haven't said that in forever. Wow. Whew. So, we are back, I guess. Um, the need was there, the demand was high. Uh, so, what do I mean by this? We know our final years are stressed. <laughs> decisions, decisions. All those six years of med school, they've all led up to this moment. Um, so I was looking at my old videos, I was looking at my old videos, and I was reminded of my own journey, of when I started YouTube, of when I was telling people to come to study medicine, uh, of moments where I, I was part of a Stellenbosch recruitment camp whereby we hosted grade 12 learners who were very eager to study medicine, and they had gotten through their first selection processes and then we hosted them for a weekend that was 2018 2019 they embarked on their journey to becoming doctors so now they are in final year wow they are in final year i am so so proud uh, i feel like the 2019 cohort uh, they will forever and ever hold a very special place in my heart because i literally saw them from when they were first year and it's been so great seeing the progression to seeing them in finally right now and to have them still dm me on instagram go whatsapp with all those messages to be like ah how, how's your hospital that you're working in um how's everything uh, is it everything that you wanted uh, are you getting exposure because now they are like transitioning into a new role and it's beautiful it's it's amazing to be part of people's journeys it's amazing to have experienced all this journey with them and i was like you know what instead of just responding to one person here one person there how about i do what i usually do best you shoot a video you tell people about your own experiences and then they can make their own informed decision but before we get into that, into my hospital, into my internship journey, I just want to share some words of wisdom, some words of advice. I understand that it's been a very long six years and the sixth year is also very tough. It's extremely exhausting because you reach a moment, a time whereby you've gone through all of this and then you're like, okay, cool. Um, I'm so tired. You can see the end is there, but to get there, like you, 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 are, you are exhausted. You feel like you are crawling. But if you need to crawl, crawl towards the end, uh, you've made it so far. I'm extremely proud of each and every uh, one of you, my subscribers, the people who have supported me. Even if you are, um, you, you get into this video for the first time ever, you've never seen this face before. For the mere fact that you fought, um, I'm very, very proud. You should be proud of yourselves as well. Um, you also need to take it very easy. Be, be, be kind to yourself. Know that internship is also um, another learning experience. Uh, the fact that you're in final year, you are counting down weeks, days, months until the end. You can hold on, keep pushing, push a bit more, and then before you know it, you'll be done. And you'll be Dr. Spud Spud! It's gonna be so amazing. You, you like that feeling when the marks drop, when that spreadsheet drops, and then you say it. Wow, I can still remember those days. I can still remember the day I got my results. I can still remember exactly where I was. I can still remember exactly the emotions. I looked at the video that I made the day after I got the results and the emotions, the way it was raw, the tears and everything, it was beautiful. It was great. So I, I, I wish you guys all the best of luck. So but without rambling a lot, let's get into this video. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of weird things. Okay, cool. I will stop. <laughs> we will stop. Um, so, I'm Sepo Magwaba. Oh, wow, I didn't even introduce myself. I am so sorry. I'm Sepo Magwaba. Dr. Magwaba, yes. I'm second year internship. So, I work in Houghton. I work at Dr. George McCurry Academic Hospital. This is where I've been rotating for my internship here. This is my second year of internship. 
um, during my final rotation, which is primary healthcare, family medicine. It's six months long. This is my first month. I've rotated through the different through the different disciplines of internship, and I will just give you guys an overview of my internship journey. Uh, what are the challenges that I experienced? Uh, the highs, the lows, and everything else in between. And then you can make your own informed decision to say, is Josh McCarthy the hospital for you? Is uh, maybe a different hospital gonna be the one suited for you? But um, like I said, this is gonna be like an individualized journey. So it's how I experienced the hospital and everything that I went through. Two people can be at the same place at the same time and both of them will experience it differently. So just because I say it's like this, it doesn't mean that everyone else is going to experience like that. Um, for me, was it my first choice? Definitely it wasn't my first choice. Um, I didn't even consider coming to Josh Mukari as, as one of my choices. So we were given five choices to choose from. I remember my first choice was Galafong Hospital. It's also in Pretoria. And then I had um, a lot of other hospitals in other provinces. Um, I was very limited in terms of my choices because of the metro rule and all of that, the rules. I made a video about it last year. Um, in terms of the application process, uh, what are the different categories, social compact and all of those things. So for me, I didn't choose Josh McCurry as any of my choices. Um, when the results finally came out, I got placed here. Um, initially, I was quite disappointed, I won't lie, because you know what you want. And for me, I didn't want to be in an academic hospital, mainly because of what I had been told that um, in an academic hospital, you'll be a paper pusher, you won't get to do procedures and all of those things. So that lingered in my mind because I wanted to be more hands-on because in medical school, for the most part, I was quite shy. I never really pushed myself to do things. Up until I got to fifth year, sixth year, and I started being more involved, pushed myself a bit more. And I feel like that also made me more confident. So I wanted to continue with that and to intention to want to do procedures. So when I got in academic hospital, I was quite worried initially to say, oh, now I'm going to be a paper pusher because that's what I had been told. But um, I didn't try to change it. Uh, I just went on with it because for me, I'm a very spiritual person. I, I, I believe we are meant to be where we're supposed to be uh, when we're supposed to be there. So in terms of coming to the hospital, I didn't try to, to change. I, 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 I dealt through with my emotions quite quickly and I accepted my fate to say that I'm going to George and I'm going to serve. Because you know when you start medical school, you say, I want to help people, I want to serve, I want to do all of these great things. But yeah, I decided to head on to Pretoria and start on <laughs> my journey through internship. Uh, for me, one of the biggest, biggest things that I'm going to emphasize throughout the video is the fact that the friends that you make during internship make or break your internship. Um, and I say this to you so that also when you get to internship yourself, you, you keep that in mind. You keep that in mind all the time to say that you need to be there for each other. What does being there for each other mean as interns? Because you have each other ultimately. Because the workload will be there. Um, a lot of things are going to be happening because you are transitioning. But for me, I want to say that my friends really held my back. Um, I always felt safe when I saw them around. And we went through this together. We transitioned together because this is quite different from being students. So my internship group, whew, loved them. Um, my friend, actually, I was quite actually, another thing that made me happy to come here was the fact that I knew that my friend was coming here. Um, we had actually met go Twitter and she, my friend Louis really became like he became like a support structure that I really needed and I really appreciate 
his work ethic as well very very good ethic and very good doctor and very good attitude so that's what you need in intention you need those things you need to be willing to learn you need to have a very good attitude you need to be able to put yourself out there so initially when we started with the rotations um it was a random thing like some people came in already as a group it was great that they could form their own groups so we started with ops and gani so when i look into ops and gani i'm doing it first it's it's i feel like if i did it let's say as the fourth rotation of the year i would have experienced it way differently than when i experienced it as the first block let's be honest um because when you come in you're trying to adjust to this new environment and it's 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 a transition it takes a while for you to get a hang of things for you to understand how things work but having my friends around really helped me quite a lot and having an intern group of people who are really willing to work of people who are pushing themselves of people who are very really reliable assisted me a lot because working in an academic hospital like George Mukari uh especially in ops it was quite challenging i won't lie um we had a lot of patients because the district hospital sends patients here so we had a lot of patients uh but we were not drowning in work i never felt like i was drowning in work and the nice thing about having a rich trust around and being in an academic hospital i think for me i I've, i've come to love the being in an academic hospital because i enjoy reading i enjoy evidence based medicine practice i enjoy having registrars that are young um because they are always present you can ask them questions they are willing to assist and teach you also like i said remember i said when you good attitude uh be reliable and then people are going to enjoy working with you don't ever be up. like people some people are always absent um when they're supposed to do calls and all there or they come late you you become you become annoying and if once you are annoying and you are unreliable people don't want to work with you people won't want to teach you because you've already are known as this particular intern but if you apply yourself i found that we applied ourselves i mean clinic days were quite long <laughs> because the queue would be so long when you arrive in the morning we went in those were the only days that i actually went past for from the clinic days which was once a week uh, on wednesday we had a clinic day we would leave work at around half past 5 sometimes 6 because you would do clinic after clinic you need to do some procedures uh, so that took a minute uh, but the other days no uh the days that we were post call we finished early and then we left the days that we were on call yes those were also the days that we really felt that we were working um because let's especially when you do labor on call you are always there because there's always someone coming you might think that I'm about to sleep but then another person comes but ah it was it was not nice I still remember those calls you you would think at 3 a.m. you're like okay I've seen the last patient let me go rest and then the ambulance stops and then the lady comes and you're like oh, please no. <laughs> think about it now it's quite funny uh, because you ah man intention so <laughs> I just not the worst thing that could ever happen but yeah normal day to day basis uh not so straight as course eventful clinic days another eventful day but it was not bad in terms of doing procedures i did do procedures i got to do ultrasounds i got to see high risk patients i learned how to manage high risk patients and i also got to put up We know when you like we do two procedures actually your amniocentesis we got to do them uh we saw the babies in postnatal uh no the moms actually not the babies we saw the moms and if the babies were not unwell were unwell then the peds doctors would see them or they would be admitted to the peds wards uh, so i don't think we were disadvantaged by being in an academic setting um and what else in terms of cesarean sections we didn't do a lot of them and i 
you know, it's it's also sometimes I, I look back and I also hold myself accountable because that is that's another thing about being older. You you get to reflect. Like I said, this was my first block of the rotation. So I was a bit I was still a, I was still trying to find myself. So I didn't really push myself much into being like let me cut, let me cut. So I only did like three or four scissors. I'm planning to do more now also in the family medicine rotation because I get an opportunity to do more again. Uh, into, but the, 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 those, those are the ones that I cut myself, but there were a lot more that I assisted. So I was there, I had to close. Sometimes you see you like, you are there, you are learning their skills. So sometimes you want to always learn by being the one who's doing things. Sometimes you are also there learning by assisting. Because you can, you are there, you are holding, they say, put some find out pressure there. You see how things are done. You are also receptive. You are learning. Uh, you get, you ask questions. Remember, it's an academic setting. The students are there, the registrars are there, everyone is there. The students also want to assist in CISA, so we need to give them opportunity to assist. Uh, so, in all of that, I didn't get to do as many scissors as I wanted, but I don't think I was disadvantaged because I got to see other procedures. I had got to see your TAH being done. Um, I had to do a lot of gyne operations also being done. So in that way, you can I can say that being in an academic setting, in a tertiary hospital, I got to experience way more. But this is not a district versus a provincial versus an academic hospital. Uh, we, we can always have those debates. There's, there's always going to be pros and cons for everything. And everyone who's passionate about whatever that they're passionate about, they will always bring their hospitals um, to the forefront as the best practices. Ultimately, the patients are the ones that matter. To always keep that in mind. The patients are the ones that matter. And yes, being an intern, you get sent around a lot. Um, you do things that people don't want to do, but you know what? It's, 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 it's a right of way. You go through it, the next group will come, they will go through it. Uh, first year of internship, it's quite intense. I found first year to be quite intense, the second year, not so much. But I will get into it as we get into the video. The second um, rotation I did, I did PITS. Um, sure, I was quite, un it was underwhelming for me. Uh, also, all of this, once I reflected at the end of the rotation, after I had done the other rotations as well, I was not impressed because I wanted to become a pediatrician. I've always wanted to become a pediatrician. It was always one of those um, fields that I enjoyed, but I, after doing the internship, I don't think so. I don't think I'll be a pediatrician. <laughs> I think they've lost a the pediatrician in me, <laughs> sorry. And mainly because of it, I, I, it, was, it was just underwhelming for me. I found it quite underwhelming, I won't lie. And it, it pains me to say this because I had the best, I had very, very good seniors. Um, they were always readily available, but I feel like the exposure that the interns were uh, exposed to it was not the greatest. I'm so sorry. I have to be quite honest. It was not the worst. I, it was just that I felt like we were babied quite a lot. Um, so let's let's let me ex try to explain it and maybe put it into perspective. Uh, in the three months rotation, I had six weeks of general peds whereby I was placed in the ward. We would see the patients every day and then we would have a ward, consulted ward round every day or family plans for the babies. And then the other six weeks uh, of the rotation, and then we did two weeks of little different rotations, if I could say that, uh, disciplines. We did, I did two weeks of neonates. They only allowed us to see the kids in units, the kids which were stable. So your kids with jaundice, uh, those uh, like the ones that are not really sick, and we would see those babies. We'd have a word round, but the other kids, um, not so much exposed to them. And this is why I feel like in a district hospital, I would have probably been exposed more to those babies. And I say this because when I did my elective at Clark Store, I got to see everything. But here, 
even when I did the other two weeks of oncology, um, I didn't get to examine the babies. My job was always to do the procedures, but they also, it was more hands-on. I did procedures, um, traced the blood, did the blood. Um, I gave chemo, so that was also quite a class. Um, yeah, I felt like even when we did the calls, we would see the patients as the interns, then the wedge would come, and then they would, we would have like a discussion about the kid family plan and then we would have the post intake ward round. The students were also around, but it was not horrible. Um, it was not bad. Even the hours were not bad. Um, for me, it was just, I think I went into the rotation having very high expectations and they were not mad. I remember <laughs> my friend Louis when we were writing our. Um, at the end of the day, because on your internship book, you have to write, did you, what did you learn and all of that. And my friend was very honest and he said they didn't learn anything. And that was the honest truth of how we felt that we didn't feel like, I didn't go into peace and come out feeling like, let's go. You know, like you get into some blocks, you come out, you're like, give me a bit special now. Oh, I'll do that thing. It's like, uh, it's, it, 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 re it didn't hit the mark, but it happens. It's life. Um, we can cry about it. <laughs> Internal medicine. Oh, Lord. That blog traumatized me. <laughs> wow, guys. Doing internal medicine in a tertiary hospital. It is a trip. It's a trip. I actually made notes here of things I want to speak about. But then I realized that we are having a discussion, so there's no need for the no signal. So let's have a talk. So internal medicine, oh my word, what a traumatic experience. What? At a tertiary hospital. But senior-wise, oh, I got the best. Of everyone else, I think I had the best the seniors. I love, 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 love my seniors. We still speak every now. We chat. I see my 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 wish there. Oh, love, 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 love her. Uh, my other wish was uh, was was writing her final. She's a consultant now. Oh, love her so much. Love her, love her to bits. Oh, like I can think of each and every one of them. Uh, my other wish from internal. <laughs> Every time she sees me, she would be like, when? You want to specialize in everything? And that's just me as an individual. I enjoy medicine. I enjoy working with people. Put me in hell in medicine. I will still thrive. Okay? Like, I'll still push myself. Like, for me, like, put me anywhere. I'll be fine. But the blog, Tesha Academic Hospital, in town medicine, the patients that we get are quite ill because remember the patients go through primary health care they go through district hospitals by the time they get here they're quite ill so it was very traumatic in that our patients were very very ill they were very very sick and uh, every day it felt like we were fighting a losing battle and i didn't like that i don't like like i know death is part of medicine but i didn't come into medicine to experience that much death and every time you were on call for internal medicine you were Certifying patients that the wards would call you close to five times in one call. The patients are unresponsive. You already know when, but the patients are unresponsive. It's done. The BIs every Monday, like there are families waiting for you. And uh, oh, you're like, I saw this patient yesterday. What do you mean this patient is, is normal? Uh, that, was, that was not nice. Patient or patient load, we had a lot of patients also. We had a lot of patients, uh, especially our unit, but um, we, I, I didn't have that experience of people saying they leave work after working hours and all of that. I think I've been quite blessed. I've been quite blessed with a group of interns that I personally work with. We work so well. We would assist each other, make sure that all the work is done by the time we leave. And that helped. We were done by two. If we were too late by three, if we were on call, the worst days in internal medicine were the days whereby your clinic day is oh, clinical drag, clinical drag, because you can't start the day by going straight to clinic. That that's the thing that patients don't understand. You go to the wards first. You do you need to do the 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 round. The patients need to be seen there. You need to do the ward work. If they've got scans, those scans need to be booked, and then you go to clinic. When you get to clinic, the patients are already upset because they're like, 
we have been here since 5 a.m. What do you mean you're coming here at past 10? For them, they do not understand that you came here past like, to 8 already. You started at the wards before you came here. But for them, it's like, oh, and already the queue is long. But yeah, we fought our battles. Yeah. Um, the worst days were the days where well, the unit was both on call and had clinic. Or the worst, worst one was when the unit was post call and having clinic on the same day. Because now remember, you've done 24 hours, then you have to go and fight that clinic as well. So imagine 24 hours and then plus 8 hours of work seeing the patients at the clinic. Yo, by the time you leave there, you're like, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm really, really ready to shut down. But those were the experiences that we went through. In terms of procedures, we got to do a lot. Lumbar punctures I can do, CVP I can put it there, I can put it there. At a district hospital probably I wouldn't. But this is some of the things I'm trying to highlight because people say academic hospitals, you are a paper pusher. But as much as I was pushing paper, I was also doing procedures. I was also managing patients. Um, you know, like we do a lot, that's the thing. We do a lot of procedures. Um, it's an academic hospital, yes, there's not gonna be a lot of teachings. And, really really appreciating that about academic hospitals now because we do evidence-based medicine people are reading people are uh, like we are practicing medicine using the guidelines so that was also quite good and then time to my best rotation what guys best rotation of the year trauma surgery i did it from october to december you know like during trauma in december you know it's do, 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 because you guys don't like each other stabbings like everything crash injuries accidents you name them it gave it was giving and funny enough i was all for it because i really got to experience different traumas i've never really enjoyed surgery let's be like i never enjoyed surgery at stellenbosch and i loved my varsity but surgery made me tense. I was almost an edge because, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I think my confidence levels were also not the best for medical school. I think I was quite shy, quite reserved. All the time I felt like maybe I could say me elbow. <laughs> but doing trauma surgery really, really boosted my confidence. I had the best seniors again. And you, I will keep on repeating this. With every rotation, the thing that helped me the most, I've always had, like I've had the best seniors with each and every rotation. And that's the thing that really, really helps us as interns. That's what you need. Best support system from your peers, your fellow interns, best support system from your seniors. If you've got those, you can survive anything. You can survive. Trauma, we were working. Every day it felt like we were on call. Because every day we got new patients. Every day you never knew when that ambulance will stop what you are getting. And my consultant, great. The registrars, the best. Uh, they allowed us to run casualty. We were running casualty as interns. We were seeing patients but first people to see the patients, uh, we are stabilizing the patients, you know, like, and then the seniors come, we present the patients. If it's a P1, the P1 is that those patients are really, really sick there. Like, we, we really have to do now ETLS principles, like, right now, because if you don't do that, the patients will might demise. So that, those ones would also call the seniors to be like, hey, we've got a P1 here. The team would come during the day, if it's on call, he, the, the research you're on call with, they will come. And that, guys i do not want to lie um at somebody who had been struggling with anxiety being put up in that environment each and every day it was quite daunting i thought maybe i was not going to be able to do it but i did it each and every day i did it i went for it and i got better and better and better by the time the rotation ended i looked at myself i was like you know i could do surgery you know i could be a surgeon I never thought I could, I could, I never ever saw myself as a surgeon. But I was like, I could do this. I could be a casualty officer. I could run a casualty. Like, wow. 
your crush injuries. They came. We saw them. Um, I, like, I mean, it's a lot of work, yeah. Um, but because remember now, you, you didn't say I was doing trauma. Here, uh, everyone is doing a very specific discipline. Other people are doing acute care. Other people are doing minimum visceral. Other people are vascular. Uh, surgery interns. I'm raising this because it just goes to show that you won't experience everything in internship in surgery. Uh, but if you are passionate about a particular uh, surgical discipline uh, as part of general surgery, you might just be an intern for that discipline. You can request for it, they will put you there and you'll see what they do on a, on a daily basis. Um, apparently, before they used to allow interns to rotate at the end of the month, but now you stay with your people for three months. You stay within those people for three months because it helps. Because meeting new people every month, no. <laughs> no, I'd rather, I'd rather the devil that you know. Give me my people for three months, and that is fine. Um, in a district hospital, probably you will see all the surgical disciplines at once because all the surgical patients will go to one ward and then they will be seen there. In a specialized unit, it's not like that. Um, you will be a very specialized unit, and then you stay there, and then that's your you intern for that. I mean, radiology will give you stress as interns. Ah! Our biggest ops is radiology. You'll go to book a scan. I said, why are you booking the scan? Why is it necessary? I'm like, bruh, I'm booking the scan because my consultant said so. <laughs> it's quite frustrating when the radiologist says, no to your skin, and then you senior expect that scan to be booked. But you know what? Um, I used to fight radiology, I used to be very upset with them, but I feel like reflecting now, I get to realize sometimes the scans were ordered, especially when you're doing internal medicine, you're like, are we just doing um, scans and tests at patients hoping for the best? Because they also, you know, you, know, you can't expose patients to radiology just for the sake of it, just for the fun of it. So we also have to consider that to say, why are we doing this scan for? Are we doing this scan for academic purposes or what? Uh, what I mean by that, sometimes the scans are, you know that the, whatever the results of the scan you're going to get, they're not really going to change the management of the patient right now. So some scans, you can really see the patient's the prognosis is not so good. The scan is being done for academic purposes. Uh, what we mean is that so that we can teach the people that are here, so we can teach the registrars, we can teach the students, that's why you're doing the scan. So you can come and discuss the results of the scan. Um, but we don't really want to have any of that. But, yeah, that was the first day of intention. Quite intense, um, but not the worst. On average, I never did more than eight hours of um, of. 80 hours a month of calls. So 80 hours it gives uh, two weekend calls and then two weekday calls. So yeah, always managed to do that. In town medicine, I did only three calls a month. The best three. So I did 64 hours and peace. I did eight hours. So I had two weekdays and two weekends. Obstetrics, 80 hours, it was two weekdays and two weekends. Um, in surgery, we if, if the first month we did way too many calls. I think we did eight calls. Um, but that was because we were doing four interns per call. Two would do trauma, two would do acute care, acute care. So we choose general surgery patients. So we would have four interns on call. And we realized that we don't have the numbers to to actually have four people on call because it meant like you are on call every third day it was too much so we decided because this so these are some of the things we can always decide and reflect as a group to say because after the first month we like okay, we can we can't we can't do this it's a lot so now we we spoke to our intern curator and then we decided we can do uh two interns uh, on weekdays and four during the weekend. So what it meant we would have one um, general surgery, we would have one trauma intern per call, and then on weekends we would have um, two would do general surgery and then two would do trauma. So you can also give each other breaks also. So then that amounted to at least five calls in a month. Um, 
and then we we try to also push it to four calls and then we still managed to do that but it was the calls were never really hectic i never really felt that they were bad especially here and the one thing that i can emphasize for myself because remember like i said people experience things differently and i, I, I one of my registrars in surgery asked me that uh do i think i'm getting good exposure to internship and i said yeah i for me i'm very happy and then she was like i'm glad you said that and then she said to me and it was really stuck with me love like Thank you, my queen, for saying that to me. You know who you are. So she was like to me, you know, I look at you and I feel that you would, every hospital that you were, you are put in, you would probably thrive. And then she said this to me, and then she was like, internship is also a personality thing. And then she said, the way you apply yourself, the way you are punctual, the way you always show up, the way you are always eager to learn. Um, a lot of us as seniors always enjoy being on call with you. We enjoy working with you. We enjoy teaching you also. So because of their attitude as well. So that really sticked with me to say that the people actually are appreciating all of this. And for her to say that we can we can you can be put in anything. You'll probably enjoy all the hospital experiences because of the person that you are. The way you present yourself to people, um, it they also treat you quite differently. Hence, I've had situations whereby even the people that others consider to be mean, they've never really been mean to me. I've never really experienced somebody being rude or being mean to me. So I also felt like maybe it's a personality thing as well. I mean, is it always good? <coughs> So I've been been speaking. So <clears throat> is it always good? Not really, um, because we need to also um, being reliable, being punctual, opens yourself up also to abuse. Also, I have found that the people who often chose themselves, the people who didn't really apply themselves that much, where actually most of the time they would be left alone. Um, they would not be called at three o'clock to say, "Hey, there's a patient there. We need a signal." Oh, this patient is a drip. Oh, we have this blood transfusion. Are uh, you have one? Can you please do it? Because they would, because with those people, they always felt like ah, Shem, you can ask, you can ask that person, but they won't do it. So you like you know, there's a bit interest. No one, no one calls you. <laughs> so it's a protective mechanism. Remember, like at home, like everyone knows this. At home, the lazy cousin is left alone. The one who works. <laughs> But I feel like that's 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 just the cross that one has to carry, and then I was like, that's my bad. That's 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 the path I chose, and that's the path that I'm in. But all in all, first of internship, it was hectic. I won't lie, but was it the worst thing that have, that has ever ex I had happened to me? No, not the worst thing that has happened to me. Probably the best thing that has happened to me. I'm happy. I think I'm glowing. Even the body is a bit bigger. Like, you know, like, home mm -hmm. is not the worst thing that has happened. Um, very, very appreciative of my friends. I would say that. Muhulu, um, Simanga, Manamela, they've been a very consistent group of interns that I've worked with. Friends, we are now siblings, we go out together. And that's very really important because because we have formed a friendship, the way we treat each other, the way we relate with each other, is always from a place of love. Um, so I, we can we are very reliable also on each other. If I'm if something needs to be done, I can't do it. I'm far. I can always call my friend and be like, "Hey, friend, are you close by? Um, I need this. I know they will be. If they are around, they can do it. They will be able to do it." Um, I know that they wouldn't necessarily just leave work without being done because they respect me. We respect each other. We we are there for each other. We are each other's pillars, and having that very helpful. Having that has made internship more pleasant than it, that it, than it should be. Second year of internship, oh my God. 
the good life. I don't think there's just something about second of intention. I, I won't go into the blocks in detail, like the first year blocks. Uh, but let me tell you, psychiatry, anesthesia, orthopedics, soft life. <laughs> soft, soft life. Soft. Like, oh, it's like everything just calms down. You know that internship flow? <laughs> the second year flow? The hours go down. Like, who not? It's like the calls. Oh, I enjoyed side calls so much. Oh, I had some interns in the hospitals do casual to calls during psych. What? Are you, are you nuts? Are they crazy? Side calls. You are sleeping. You you are in bed and you are on call. Also calls like the, like the patients are not gonna die because of the bone guys. No, they they will die because of the other things. The hemothorax, the hemothorax, those are the things. Put a, put an ICD drain as the trauma intern on call. I'll, like for me, I'll come and just stabilize the fracture. Uh, you know what? That won't kill the patient. The patient is gonna die because of the other things. Let's sort out the other things first. But it's been great. It's 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 anesthesia. Anesthesia has my heart now. This is where I'm going in terms of DA next year. Uh, anesthesia primaries next year. Your anesthesiologist. You see, even the scrubs now. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was great. The teachings, uh, like, guys, I can do your spam. I can do your GA. I can convert a spinal to GA if we are failed. Like, great. Like, you know what? Opportunities are there. But the intention, I'm over it right now. Literally, for me, I feel like I'm ready to go into the next phase of my life. But, internship is a ghetto. If you be very honest, it is the ghetto. <laughs> you literally, bottom of the food chain. You are doing everything that no one wants to do. And seniors, we need to have a talk. We need to have a discussion with seniors <laughs> because some seniors are very dodgy. I think we need to raise that. That some seniors dodgiest. I was doing a cycle and it, because I because I need to tell you, I was doing a cycle. They we fed seven patients at midnight. And the red said, guys tell me once you are done tracking these patients. I was like, I was like, I'm not doing this. Last call outside, I was like, I am not doing that. Slept because there was a no. It takes an hour to track a psych patient. Because that tracking format, it's quite detailed, it's very necessary, but it's very long. So I was like, surely not that. Surely, surely not that. So with this, I'm trying to say is that you'll have very good seniors at work you'll have very bad seniors as well at work you'll have very good interns you'll be have very bad interns whether you are in an academic hospital whether you are in a district hospital you'll always it, they all deliver but at the core of it all the patients always have to get the best possible gift and the other thing that's quite important you need to take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, no one else will. Other people might try, but you need to take care of yourself. What I mean by this is that you need to give yourself a break. You need to give yourself a break to go eat. Some people don't believe in taking lunches. Other people do. Please take your lunch. Initially, when I started an internship, I was really never into lunch. I really wanted to work, 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 and push. Now, I take my breaks. Take your breaks. Prioritize your health. Internship, very difficult. So, be the good intern to your fellow interns. But do not allow them to take advantage of you. Yeah, I'm going to repeat that. Do not allow them to take advantage of you. And then, in the same breath, do not take advantage of your colleagues' kindness. 
do not take advantage of your colleagues kindness please it's very very important medicine is a team sport treat each and every person with respect the nurses you will learn a lot from them there are nurses who are willing to teach learn there are nurses that are bullies just ignore them don't fight them just put them on ice because once you try to fight them they will try to make your life difficult if they try to make your life difficult you won't enjoy work stick to the people who want to teach you there's great great nurses who are willing to teach who are because they've seen this they know a lot more our colleagues are great but with all of that thank you so much hopefully this video has been great if you have any more questions leave them in the description box and then we will get into them i hope this video is not too long but you know what even if it's an hour long it's getting posted wait 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 in terms of dq the dqs i will send i'll, I'll drop in some pictures um in terms of the area the areas like the, the hospitals in Pretoria, guys in terms of safety hey we live in South Africa. It's as safe as any other Kasi in South Africa. We are almost on the light. <laughs> I won't call. I won't call. The DQs, we pay 900. I pay 900, 900 rent for DQ. It's quite spacious. Um, what else did you guys ask about? There's a lot of things that people ask about. But if you have any more questions, just drop them on the link. And then on the comment section, like, what? Drop them on the comment sections. Because I haven't shot a YouTube video in a while. I forgot. I said description. Like, okay. But anyway, don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Because we are planning to have more and more and more.